What's good, guys? Today is Monday, November the 30th, 2020. A week ago, I did a video titled, What's Going On in Brevard County? It was about um, two Brevard County Sheriff's deputies that were investigating the possible stolen vehicle in the Cocoa area when they came across a 16-year-old and an 18-year-old, and they shot them to death inside the vehicle. And it gets worse. This is from 16 hours ago. It's a video from the Tampa Bay Times titled, Mother of Slain Coco Teen Shot During Burial Service. Sincere Paris, 18, and Angelo Croom, 16, have been shot to death November the 13th by a Brevard County Sheriff's Deputy. An unknown gunman fired into a crowd gathered at a Saturday afternoon burial service of a teenager who was fatally shot by a Florida Sheriff's Deputy earlier this month, officials said. The deceased teen's mother was wounded by the bullet, Florida Today reported. The shooting happened as guests gathered at Riverview Memorial Gardens to pay their respects to 18-year-old Sincere Pierce. Pierce and 16-year-old Angelo Crooms were killed November the 13th by a Brevard County Sheriff's Deputy. The shot rang out as the pastor had just finished his, finished his prayers and the teen's friends and loved ones were placing flowers on the casket, the newspaper reported. The loud popping sound was followed by stunned silence before Quashita Pierce screamed that she'd been hit. The newspaper reported that mourners were at first slow to react before realizing what had occurred. They began rushing to nearby cars and leaving the funeral quickly. Friends and family members helped Quashita Pierce into a minivan before ambulance arrived. Deputies carrying rifles arrived a short time later in response to multiple 911 calls. The mother was taken to a hospital, but the severity of her injury was not immediately known. Detectives and crime scene investigators remained at the cemetery throughout the afternoon Saturday, the newspaper reported. The teens were killed when Deputy Hafet Santiago Miranda fired multiple shots into their car when the teens didn't pull over. Sheriff Wayne Ivey had said the deputies thought the vehicle might have been stolen but the teens' families and lawyer Natalie Jackson said they had permission to use the car and called it a case of mistaken identity. Their deaths captured national interest, with well-known civil rights attorney Benjamin Crump working on behalf of the families in what he called a bid for justice. Ivy has released dash cam footage from the November the 13th shooting that showed the teens pulling into a driveway after being followed by two sheriff's cars without lights. Crooms, who was driving, then backed out of the driveway and drove forward in the direction of a deputy who, gun drawn, repeatedly shouted at the teen to stop the car. The sheriff said in a Facebook post that the deputy, quote, was then forced to fire his service weapon in an attempt to stop the deadly threat of the car from crashing into him. Whew. I cannot imagine trying to deal with that tragedy and then trying to bury my child and having someone shoot um, at the funeral service and actually hit the mother of the um, young lady that was killed. So I just wanted to bring that to the channel because um, I try to follow these cases on out. And um, yeah, that, that's shameful. It gets worse. This is coming from um, Local 10 News, ABC Local 10 News, out of Florida. It says, report, 16-year-old at burial service accidentally shoots mother of Florida teen killed by deputy. The deceased young man's mother taken to hospital with gunshot wound to leg. A gunshot fired into the crowd gathered at the burial services of a teenager who was fatally shot by a Florida Sheriff's deputy hit the deceased young man's mother, wounding her. 
Quashita Pierce was hit as the pastor finishes prayers at Riverview, Riverview Memorial Garden Saturday afternoon, according to Florida Today, who originally reported this story. About 50 people were paying respects to 18-year-old Sincere Pierce. Pierce and 16-year-old Angelo Crooms were killed November the 13th. It goes on to say, Local 10 sister station WKMG reported that an initial investigation found that the shot at the service came from an accidental discharge from a gun carried by a 16-year-old attending the burial. The shot penetrated the teen's leg and impacted Pierce's leg, WKMG reported. Family members attended to her before paramedics arrived and took her to the hospital. Ah, so... That's terrible. So this woman is trying to um, bury her child. And a 16-year-old at the service who brought his pistol accidentally discharged his weapon, shooting himself and also shooting and injuring the mother. When is it going to stop? The foolery. I did want to take this uh, opportunity to share the GoFundMe of Angelo Crooms. They have a goal of $10,000. they have raised uh, $1,900. It says Tasha Strachan is organizing this fundraiser. Or Strachan. It was created two days ago. It says, on November the 13th, 2020, I received the most heartbreaking news of my life. My 16-year-old son, Angelo Crooms, was shot and killed by a Florida Sheriff's deputy during an attempted traffic stop. The officer also shot and killed Sincere Pierce, who was an 18-year-old occupant of the vehicle. My son, Angelo, was a loving and caring child who leaves behind eight amazing siblings whom he loved dearly. This fund is established to cover outstanding funeral and burial expenses, mental and grief counseling, lodging and travel for all court proceedings, and to assist our family in the days to come as we continue to seek justice for Angelo. Anyone wishing to send cards, letter, letters of encouragement, and or contributions in the form of a money order or check may do so by mail at the Estate of Angelo Crooms, Care of Ben Crump Law, PLLC. 122 South Calhoun Street, Tallahassee, Florida, 32301. Attention, Adner, Marcelin. All checks must be made out to Tasha Strachan. Commonly asked questions. Number one, who are you? Tasha Strachan, the mother of Angelo Croom. Number two, where you're from? Brevard County, Florida. Number three, your relationship to the parties you're raising funds for. Angelo is my biological son. Number four, how the funds will be spent. Funds collected here will be spent by the Strachan Crooms family as outlined above. This fund will be governed in control of the discretion of Tasha Strachan for the family's benefit. How do you intend to get the funds to those in need? All funds collected on this website will be withdrawn to an established account for the benefit of the family. 100% of funds collected here will go to my family. Anyone with further questions about this page may contact Agner Marcelin of Ben Crump Law, PLLC, at, and then the email has been redacted. From the bottom of our hearts, my family thanks each of you who have reached out. While we are not able to respond to each expression of love at this time, please know that we love and appreciate each and every one of you. Our hearts are overwhelmed. Tasha Strachan. Um, I know it's just two days old. But I've never seen a GoFundMe set up like that. However, I am going to post that um, link in the description box of this video. I was trying to see if maybe there was one that had been set up for... Um, The other, the young lady who was in the car, but I don't see one right offhand. So I just wanted to bring that as well to the channel. And I'm going to check out the case itself and do an update a little later today. But I at least wanted to bring that breaking news to the channel. So you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching. 
So I found the GoFundMe for Sincere Pierce. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not even sure that the news station knows this. But this is a young man. This is not a young lady. This family was attempting to raise $100,000. And so far they have raised $56,795. However, it has been created since the 16th of November. So they have had the time to generate those kind of funds where the other uh, Angelo Crooms mother uh, just started two days ago. 18-year-old Sincere Spud Pierce, born April 2nd of 02, was a bright and lively individual. He was a son, nephew, brother, cousin, confidant, and friend to many. Sincere had a passion for music and he let it be known through his recordings and frequent visits to the recording studio to put his voice out there. Um, I still don't think... Uh, even in my article earlier, the news station is referring to Sincere as a female. Sincere left his home in Coco Friday, November the 13th, 2020 at approximately 10.31 a.m. with friends and no one expected what would happen next. Sincere, along with the other passengers of the vehicle, would be the next victims of an officer shooting minutes later. Sincere was a victim of gun violence at the hands of Brevard County Sheriff's deputies in pursuit of a vehicle. This vehicle mm -hmm. traveling on Stetson Drive in Coco, Florida, with Sincere as a passenger, was not the vehicle the officers were pursuing. Sheriff's deputies opened fire on the vehicle as his mother stood by pleading, Please don't shoot. My baby is in the car. He just got in the car. Please. This was clearly a case of mistaken identity and negligence upon BCSO deputies. Cynthia Green, a longtime resident of Brevard County and mother and guardian of Sincere, watched as deputies yelled for the occupants of the vehicle, accompanied by Sincere, to stop the vehicle and then immediately began firing rounds into windows of the car and what would seem to disable the occupants. This is beyond their training measures provided by FDLE prior to becoming road deputies. These shots all appeared to be kill shots as multiple shots were fired into the windows of the vehicle. Firing at the vehicle immediately disabled the driver, and with inability mm -hmm. to control the vehicle, it veered off, was stopped by a wall in a neighboring resident's home on Stetson Drive. Miss Green stood by as deputies spewed profanities at her, position, at her, positioned themselves on foot in what already appeared to be a standoff, and murdered her son and his friend. This was a direct negligent act at the hands of Brevard County deputies, law enforcement. These are deputies that are sworn to, quote, protect and serve. In this, what, BCOS, what BCSO deputies are calling an, quote, isolated incident, end quote, clearly was not. Now Sincere, along with a friend, with friend, a 16-year-old passenger, met their demise that morning going to visit other friends. No other information is being released on the status of the officers or investigation for this heinous act. It should be known to the public that no weapons or illicit drugs were found in this vehicle. All occupants of the vehicle were unarmed and therefore by law not considered armed and dangerous. We the family are pleading for help and we want justice. We do not want our children afraid of law enforcement. This has made an immediate impact on our family both young and old. Burial services are extremely expensive. To have sincere, a son, brother, nephew, cousin, and friend buried in the most respectful manner possible, we are asking for donations. This will help aid Christopher and Cynthia Green in any way possible. It will not change what has happened to their son, but will, however, give them hope for a positive outlook for things to come. Thank you for the read and advance for any donations received. God bless. There's an update. Well, let's read them backwards. Ooh, there's a lot of updates, actually. The first update was that same day. The family would like to thank all, all that have personally donated thus far. All of you, we are so very grateful and thankful to you all. Justice is coming. God bless. Same day, sincere. His smile literally spoke his name. Gone too soon. We miss you and love you forever. November the 19th. Update. The peaceful protest held for Sincere and Asia was a major success. We were able to walk throughout the city with the assistance of Coco Police Department redirecting traffic for us all. Our safety was their number one priority and for that we are truly thankful. We are truly thankful for their 
CPD presence and diplomacy during this marchful, this peaceful march, whether they were supportive of the cause or not. To the people that stood with the signs on corners as we walked wait, waiting patiently for our arrival to let us know they were there with us, signs with the word justice, you all are amazing. This has shaken our little town of Cocoa, Florida and pulling at a number of heartstrings as the unimaginable has happened. We want justice for our young men and with God anything is possible. Thank you all. On the 20th, they did a uh, dinner fundraiser. There were also photos posted showing um, the protests. Again, more photos from the protest. Same day. That's definitely right. I'm sorry, guys. I have a cat that's in heat, and she is driving me literally bananas. That's why I'm up <laughs> this early in the morning. On the 21st, thinking on how proud he'd be knowing this family was together. Sincere, we miss you beyond heaven and back. On the 23rd, she posted about great support they were getting. And then on the 28th... Um, she posted the viewing um, for her son, which was held Friday, and then the funeral service was to be held Saturday. And she posted these photos. And then this was posted actually today. It says, I want to thank each and every one of you, of you for your donation. I tried to thank each one individually, but it was overwhelming. All that I didn't thank personally, I'm so sorry. I appreciate everyone for their prayers and thoughts again. Thank you all. So, um, I wanted to bring this update. And like I said, I'll update the case uh, sometime a little later today. But I appreciate you guys for watching. You guys have a great day.